Hey friends, in today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make this cute and festive Santa hat wine topper. This is designed to fit a standard 750 milliliter bottle of wine and is perfect for gifting someone their favorite wine during the holidays or just adding to your holiday decor at home. Okay, so let's talk about everything that you're gonna to need to make this wine topper. So first, you're going to need two contrasting colors of number five bulky weight yarn. So I'm using this Hue and Me. I'm using this green to be my main color. This is going to be the color of the hat itself. And then this cream color is going to be the brim and the pom-pom. Now this is classified as a number five bulky weight yarn, but in my opinion, this really is a bit thicker than a traditional number five. And then you're also going to need a stitch marker because we are gonna be working completely in the round. We will not be joining rounds. So you're gonna need a stitch marker to mark your rows, a tape measure to measure your brim, scissors, an eight millimeter crochet hook, and a tapestry needle for sewing in your ends. All right, so go ahead and grab whatever color you've chosen to be your contrasting color. This is going to be your brim and the pom-pom. For me, it is this salt color of this Hue and Me yarn. Now this is a fold up brim, okay? So we're actually going to make this brim twice as long as we need it to be because it's going to be folded up in half when it's all assembled. All right, so go ahead and make a slip knot attach your yarn to your hook and you are going to chain 20. All right, now once your chain is made, go ahead and make one slip stitch in the second chain from the hook. And now you're just going to make one slip stitch in each chain all the way across. So go ahead and pause this video, make your slip stitches all the way across, and then I'll meet you back here to start row two. Once you've gotten to the end of your starting chain, go ahead and chain one and turn your work. Now the chain one does not count as a stitch. All right, so to begin row two, you are going to make one slip stitch in the back loop only of the very first stitch. And now you're just gonna continue working in the back loops, making one slip stitch in each stitch all the way across. Be careful that your tension is not too tight. These stitches can easily become difficult to work into if they're too tight. So just make sure that your tension is nice and loose. All right, so once you've come to the end of row two, go ahead and chain one and turn your work. And now row three is going to be a repeat of row two. You're just gonna continue working in the back loops only, making one slip stitch all the way across and just repeat this row over and over and over again until your brim reaches seven inches in width. So go ahead and pause this video and then meet me back here once your brim is just about seven inches and then we will finish it up together. All right, welcome back. So this is what your finished brim should look like. Those slip stitches in the back loop only really do give it a lot of stretch. I'm just gonna measure this one more time to make sure. And yep, we're just about, we're right at seven inches there, so it is time to start sewing up our brim. All right, so since this is actually reversible, there really is no right or wrong side. It doesn't matter which side you fold it up on, just make sure that you're folding it on the long side, okay? So that you still have the, the stretchy side here. And then we're just going to sew it up all the way across. All right, now listen, I'm not much of a seamstress, so please don't judge me, judge me by my sewing skills. I will say, alternatively, you can do slip stitches. You can um, actually keep your yarn attached to your hook and just do slip stitches all the way across. I've done it that way before too, but um, I like sewing it, so. So basically, I'm just whip stitching this all the way across, which means I continue to insert my hook from front to back through each stitch all the way across. So go ahead and pause this video, stitch up your brim, and then I will meet you back here for the next step. All right, so once you've sewn your brim all the way across, now see I have my original end here, I have 
um, the end that I just finished sewing with plus my the end that I started with when I made my slip knot. I, guys, I just do one of these, okay? We, I just tie them up and then tie them up together and fasten them off. Once you've fastened your ends, just go ahead and cut them. Right, and now this end where we have our little knot, um, I just make sure that this is the end that I sew into the hat so that when we when we fold the brim up, you don't you don't even see that because it's going to be inside the hat now. OK. Um, all right. So for now, you're just going to set your brim aside and we're going to go ahead and start to make the hat now. OK, so now I want you to grab your main color. We're going to start making the actual hat now. I've chosen this really pretty dark green color. Um, so whatever color you've chosen to be your main color, go ahead and grab that. And we're going to begin the hat portion of this pattern. All right, so first you're just going to go ahead and make a slip knot. And you are going to make 20 chains. So go ahead and pause this video and then meet me back here once you've made your 20 chains. All right, now once you've made your 20 chains, we're going to, we need to form a circle, okay? And it's very important that your chain is not twisted. So make sure that your chain the right side of your chain is facing you and that there aren't any twists or anything in your chain, okay? So you're going to take the tail end, the very first chain you made, and you're going to slip that onto your crochet hook. And then just yarn over and pull through to secure it. And then I always just take this tail and I just tighten up on it because it's always a little bit loose. All right, so now you've made a circle with your chain. Now go ahead and chain one, and then just kind of rotate your circle so that the right side of this first chain is now facing you. So now you're just going to work one single crochet into this first chain. And this row in particular, make sure that you're making your single crochets kind of on the loose side, okay? You kind of want to work loosely for most of this pattern, but if there was a row that I had to pick that was the most important, it's probably this one. Um, so you're going to continue to make one single crochet in each chain all the way around, and I will meet you back here to start round two with you. So go ahead and pause this video, make your single crochets loosely. I want to make sure I uh, emphasize the loosely part <laughs> and then I'll meet you back here. We'll start round two. All right, so to begin round two, from here on out, we're going to be making the waistcoat stitch, which is basically, if you don't know what a waistcoat stitch is, it is a single crochet. It's just made in a different spot. So you're still going to be making single crochets as you normally would. You're just going to insert your hook into a different space. I'm going to show you where that space is. I'm actually going to show you it in the second stitch here because this first stitch is kind of it's kind of buried in there it's hard to see and also my color choice for this tutorial <laughs> probably wasn't that great um anyway so when you work a normal single crochet you insert your hook under these top two loops correct well we're not going to do that we're still going to make our single crochet as we normally would but you're going to look for this v on the front of these single crochets in the previous row. Trust me, it's a lot easier to see on subsequent rows, okay? Uh, you're going to insert your hook through the center of this V, and that's what's going to give it that really nice um, and uniform knit look. So go ahead and grab your hook. Now, like I said, this first stitch is not really easy to see, and you know what, don't sweat it, okay? If you don't exactly make it in the right space in this first stitch, it, no one's gonna know. Okay, because your brim, honestly, your brim is going to cover um, a portion of this row anyway. So don't, don't, don't worry about it. All right, so find the center the best you can in this first stitch. It's kind of buried. Um, I, I just kind of feel it out and insert my hook wherever it goes in for that first one. <laughs> All right. Um, now, this one is a lot easier to see. So you're just going to insert your hook into that second stitch. Again, you're just working a single crochet as you normally would. It's just a difference of where you're where you're putting your hook. All right, and now your second waistcoat stitch is made. So now we're going to go on to the next single crochet. 
insert your hook in the center of that V and you're probably now finding out did I just yarn over before I did that I did huh. um, you're you're probably finding out now if you crocheted this row a little too tight uh, this previous row you're probably now figuring that out um, it's super super important that that first row be as loose as possible all right so this is our fourth stitch so there's our V you can see it a lot a little better here insert your hook into the center of the V and complete your single crochet all right and now you can see you can start to see how we, we have this little this knit look starting to form all right so continue to make one waistcoat stitch in the center of those V's all the way around until you get to your stitch marker um, pause this video and then I'll meet you back here to start the next round with you all right so I've come to my last stitch I'm just gonna remove my stitch marker there so that I can work my last stitch in here oops that wasn't quite the right spot all right okay so your first full row of waistcoat stitches has been made and you can start to see how these uh, single crochets are stacking on top of each other and you've got these nice little V shapes it looks very much like knit stitches um, I'm going to replace my stitch marker before I forget all right so to continue you're actually going to repeat this last round that we just did with waistcoat stitches. So you're going to continue making waistcoat stitches all the way around until you have 12 rounds total. So you'll do, you'll repeat this last round 10 more times. So go ahead and pause this video, make those next two rounds. Don't forget about your stitch marker to mark your rounds. And then I will meet you back here to start our first decreasing round. All right, welcome back. So once you've finished those 10 rows, you should now have a total of 12 rows so far of your wine topper. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and move your stitch marker up so you don't lose your place. And now we're going to begin our first decreasing round. So to make a waistcoat stitch decrease, we're going to be working over the next two stitches and basically um, pulling it into one stitch so to do that you will insert your hook in the center of the V just as we've been doing for all of our waistcoat stitches and pull up a loop and now you've got two loops on your hook and now you are also going to insert your hook into this next stitch again straight through the V just as you've been doing for your waistcoat stitches and also pull up a loop and now that's going to give you three loops on your hook to complete the stitch you will just yarn over and pull through all three loops and now for the remainder of this row that is the only decreasing stitch we're going to do for this round so for the remainder of this round you can just go ahead and work one waistcoat stitch as normal all the way around so go ahead and pause this video finish up this round and then I'll meet you back here to start the next round all right so once you've come to the end of that round make sure you go ahead and move your stitch marker up and now the first stitch of this next round is we're going to be working in the center of this waistcoat stitch decrease that we made in the previous round so you can kind of see how both of these we we made two stitches into one so basically you're just going to insert your hook in the center of both of these stitches so you might have to pull them apart a little bit and then just work your waistcoat stitch right in the center of both of those stitches and now you can continue to work this round as we have been working one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around now you are going to make this round and then one more round of just waistcoat stitches all the way around so go ahead and pause this video, complete two rounds of the waistcoat stitch, and then I'll meet you back here. We're going to make another decreasing round. 
All right, so once you've completed those last two rounds of waistcoat stitches, we're going to start another decreasing round. So I'm gonna show you how to do a waistcoat stitch decrease once again. All right, so to make another waistcoat stitch decrease, again, we're working over two stitches and turning them into one. So you're gonna insert your hook in the center of the stitch, just like you would for a waistcoat stitch and pull up a loop. And then also insert your hook into this next stitch as well and pull up a loop and that's going to give you three loops on your hook yarn over and pull through all three of those loops and now you've just created a waistcoat stitch decrease so now for the remainder of this round you will just work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around so go ahead and pause this video, complete this round, and then I'll meet you back here for the next two rounds. All right, so once you've completed that decreasing round, we are going to work a waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around for the next two rounds. Um, but remember, when we work a waistcoat stitch into a decrease, you're going to be working in between these two stitches here. So you'll just place your hook right through the center of those two stitches and work your waistcoat stitch. And now you can just continue to work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around. You're going to do this for the next two rounds. So go ahead and pause this video, work those next two rounds, and then I'll meet you back here to start the next decreasing round. All right, so once you've completed the last two rounds, it's time to start another decreasing round. So we're again, we're just gonna work over these first two stitches of this round insert your hook pull up a loop and then insert your hook into the next stitch and pull up a loop and now you're just going to complete the stitch by pulling through all three loops on your hook and now you're going to finish this round simply by working one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around so go ahead and pause this video and then i'll meet you back here to do the next two rounds so once you've finished that decreasing round, our next two rounds are simply going to be waistcoat stitches all the way around, except this first stitch we do need to work into the center of this decreasing stitch. And again, you just insert your hook in between these two stitches here and work a waistcoat stitch. And now for the remainder of this round and the next round, you're going to work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around. So go ahead and pause this video, work these next two rounds, and then I'll meet you back here to start the next decreasing round. Okay, so it's time to start our next decreasing round. So once again, we are going to work a waistcoat stitch decrease over these first two stitches. So go ahead and insert your hook into the center of that first stitch and pull up a loop and then insert your hook into the center of the next waistcoat stitch and pull up a loop and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. And now you're just going to continue this round by making one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around. So go ahead and pause this video, work your waistcoat stitches all the way around, and then I'll meet you back here to do the next two rounds with you. All right, welcome back. So these next two rows are going to be exactly the same. We're just gonna do two rows of nothing but waistcoat stitches. Again, with the exception of this very first decrease stitch, as you know, we work into the center of both of those stitches and work our first waistcoat stitch. And now from here on out, for the next two rounds, you are going to work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around. So go ahead and pause this video, work your two rounds, and I'll meet you here. I'll meet you back here to start the next decreasing round. All right, well, congratulations. You have now made it to the halfway point of this hat. As you can see now, our hole here is getting smaller and smaller with each decreasing round. And you can see how it's um, finally starting to take on a tapered shape. So the second half of this hat is actually going to go by quicker because as we are decreasing rounds, we will have less stitches for each round. Thus, each round will start to go quicker and quicker. So speaking of decreases, it is time to decrease yet again. So we're gonna work a waistcoat decrease over these first two stitches of this round.
And now for the remainder of this round, you'll just go ahead and work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around. Pause this video and then I will meet you back here to start the next two rounds. Now once you've come to the end of that decreasing round, we are going to work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around starting with this decrease. Um, so again, you're going to just be working right into the center of that decrease. And now for the next two rounds, you're just going to work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around. So go ahead and pause the video, work your next two waistcoat stitch rounds, and then I'll meet you back here to make the next decreasing round. All right, so we're gonna start another decreasing round. So you're gonna work your waistcoat stitch decrease over these first two stitches of this round. And now you're gonna to continue to work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around until you get to the end of this round. So go ahead and pause the video and I'll meet you back here to start the next two rounds. Once you've completed that decreasing round, it's time to start the next two rounds. So you're going to start by working one waistcoat stitch in between this decrease from the row below. And now you're just going to work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around for the next two rounds. So go ahead and pause this video, work your two rounds of waistcoat stitches, and then I'll meet you back here to start the next decreasing row. And once you've completed those two waistcoat stitch rounds, it's time to make another decreasing round. So we're going to make our waistcoat decrease over these first two stitches of this round. Can you hear my cat eating in the background? <laughs> sorry I just let her in and uh, the first thing she did was went to her went to her food dish all right anyways uh, now for the remainder of this round you're just going to work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around so go ahead and pause this video finish up this waistcoat stitch round and then I'll meet you back here to do the next two rounds with you all right so once you've finished this decreasing round um, my cat Maybelline has decided that she uh, needed to make an appearance, I guess. Um, <laughs> all right, so once you've finished your decreasing round, now you're going to work one waistcoat stitch into this decrease from the round below. And now you'll just continue to work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around for two rounds total. So go ahead and pause this video and work your two waistcoat stitch rounds and then I will meet you back here to work the next decreasing round. All right, so once you've completed those two waistcoat stitch rounds, it is time to start yet again another decreasing round and the top of our hat is getting smaller and smaller with each decrease. So we're getting there, you're almost done. All right, so you're gonna work a waistcoat stitch decrease over these first two stitches of this round. And now you're going to work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around for the remainder of this round. So go ahead and pause this video, finish up this round, and then I'll meet you back here to start the next two rounds with you. All right, so now we're going to work two waistcoat stitch rounds, starting by working one waistcoat stitch in the center of our decrease from the round below. And now we're just going to wor work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around for the next two rounds. So go ahead and pause this video, work these next two waistcoat stitch rounds, and then I'll meet you back here to start the next decreasing round. All right, so it is time to start another decreasing round. So we are going to start by working our waistcoat stitch decrease over these first two stitches here. And now you're going to finish this round by working one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around. So go ahead and pause this video, finish up this round, and then I'll meet you back here to work through the next two rounds with you. All right, now that you've completed that decreasing round, it is time to start the next two rounds. We're going to start by working one waistcoat stitch in the center 
of our decreasing stitch from the round below. And now in every stitch for the next two rounds, you're going to work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch. So go ahead and pause this video, work these next two rounds of waistcoat stitches, and then I'll meet you back here to start the next decreasing round. All right, so it's time to start another decreasing round. So you're going to work your waistcoat stitch decrease over these first two stitches of this round. And now you're going to continue to work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around. So go ahead and pause the video, work your waistcoat stitches all the way around, and then I'll meet you back here to start the next two rounds. Now, once you've completed your decreasing round, now we're just going to work two rounds of just waistcoat stitches, starting by working a waistcoat stitch in the center of this decreasing stitch from the previous round. So go ahead and pause this video, work two rounds of waistcoat stitches, and then I will meet you back here to start the next decreasing round. All right, so it is time to start one of two remaining decreasing rounds. So we are getting there, guys. We are almost done with this hat and we'll be able to assemble it very soon. So work your waistcoat stitch decrease over the first two stitches of this round. And then work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around. So pause this video finish up this round and then I'll meet you back here to start the next two rounds. Okay, so once you've finished that decreasing round, we're going to work two rounds of just waistcoat stitches and you're gonna start by working one waistcoat stitch in the center of this decreasing stitch from the round below. And now for the next two rounds, you're just going to work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around. So go ahead and pause this video, work the next two rounds of waistcoat stitches, and then I will meet you back here to start the very last decreasing round. Okay, so you have made it to the final decreasing round of this hat pattern. We have three rounds left, and the first of these three rounds is our last decreasing round. So go ahead and work your waistcoat stitch decrease over the first two stitches of this round. And now you're going to work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around. So go ahead and pause the video, work the rest of this round, and then I'll meet you back here for the two final rounds. All right, you guys, so we only have two rounds left of this Santa hat, and then we can start putting it all together. So for these last two rounds, you are going to work a waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around, starting with this waistcoat decrease from the previous round. You'll work your first waistcoat stitch in the center of that stitch, and now you're just going to work one waistcoat stitch in each stitch all the way around for the next two rounds. So go ahead and complete these next two rounds um, pause this video, complete those rounds, and then I will meet you back here. We'll fasten this off and then we'll start putting everything together. Okay, so once you've completed those last two rounds, it is now time to fasten off finally. So go ahead and leave. We want to leave somewhat of a long tail because we do need to uh, finish closing up this, um, this hole here. So leave somewhat of a tail for yourself so that you can sew that up. And now you're going to take your tapestry needle and just thread this end onto your tapestry needle. All right, so to close up this hole, I just take my tapestry needle and I weave in and out of each stitch along the top here. And once I've woven in and out through each stitch all the way around, I can just take this end now and cinch it closed. And then once you've secured it, I just go ahead and I, I leave a little bit of a tail. 
And then I like to just take my crochet hook. You can get a skinnier hook. Uh, it will probably be easier with a skinnier hook. And then I just pull this end down into the hat. Next, you're going to grab your brim and we are going to attach it to our hat. Now, first things first, make sure that the seam that you, you sewed it up on, keep that seam on the outside because this is eventually going to be folded up and then your seam will be on the inside then. So go ahead and keep your seam on the outside. Grab your hat and you're just going to insert this into the hat all the way until this end meets this end here. Now, once you've got your brim all the way inside your hat, you wanna make sure that both of these ends are um, even with each other because we're going to be sewing all along this edge. So grab a tapestry needle and thread some yarn onto it. And now we're just going to whip stitch all the way around. Now, once you've sewn all the way around, I just take my two ends here and tie them together. And then I just tuck them inside the hat. And now you can take your brim and pull it out and fold it up just like you would on a, on a normal hat. Okay, so now it's time to attach the pom-pom to the top. Now, I made my own pom-pom, but you can use a faux fur pom-pom too. That would look really cute as well. I will make sure to link the pom-pom maker that I used to make this in the description of this video. Since I made mine, I just kept some nice long tails here on the end so that I can attach it to the top. Um, I'll just secure it to the top and then with my crochet hook, I will pull pull the ends down. I'll trim the ends first. They won't be this long, but I'll just pull the, you know, the ends down into the hat. All right. So my pom-pom is now secured to my hat. I'm just going to, uh, well, first of all, going to trim these ends probably to about here. And then now I'll just take my crochet hook and I'm just going to pull those ends down into the hat. All right, my friends, so that concludes today's crochet pattern tutorial. I hope you had fun making this Santa hat. I just think this will make such a fun, festive addition to your holiday decor this year. Be sure to leave me a comment if you have any questions about this pattern. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.